I was planning to do a bit of reconnaissance and eventually capture some interesting macro subjects at the local nature reserve, but unfortunately the weather said nope, so instead we're gonna do a bit of editing in Lumina Neo. I have selected six basic landscape shots from my archive and will be editing the raw files in Lumina Neo now. All of these were captured with my old 1DX Mark II full frame camera. I'm gonna try and transform some of these relatively bland looking frames into something decent or semi-decent by using some of the powerful tools that are in Lumina Neo. I've got several more videos about this image editing software, so feel free to have a look at those as well, where I focus on different features. Also, if you're interested in trying out this software for free, there's a trial version that you can check out. If you end up purchasing, you will find all the relevant affiliate links in the description. Also, don't forget to use my coupon code PeterVirectPhoto, which will get you an extra 10% off on top of the special deals that they tend to run from time to time. If you have any questions about the program, just get in touch with me and I will definitely help you if I can. Anyway, let's get started. All right, I've got the raw files already imported into Lumina Neo, which you can see right at the top. Let's start with this self-portrait that I took at uh, St. Kilda, I believe, a few years ago. And um, this was taken with the 1DX Mark II, as I said before, with the 35mm f1.4 lens. And you can see that I was focusing on the landscape and blurred myself out. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have just used a narrower aperture to get everything sharp, but I think it's still decent enough. All right, so let's go to the edit panel now and go to the tools. And let's have a look at all these different features that we've got here. I can already tell that the uh, horizon is not level, so maybe we can use the horizon alignment tool. Yeah, that's almost good, but I think I'm gonna move it a little bit even further. Just apply, and that's better now. And I really like this enhance AI. Let's just move the accent all the way up to 100% and you can see uh, what happens with this slider. So before and then after, I think it's a tad too much. So let's do about 60. Just creating a little bit more punch, more contrast, adding a bit of color, saturation. We can do the same with the sky. I really like that, but I think a little bit of uh, noise will be introduced there. If you push it that far, I just stick with around 60. That looks good to me. And uh, so this is before and this is after. Looks amazing. I'm not gonna use the sky replacement tool, but just for demonstrative purposes, you can see that how easily the AI replaces the sky. And then you can do plenty of adjustments I got this covered in another tutorial, so feel free to have a look if you're interested. Let's move to the Magic Light AI, where you can actually adjust or alter the artificial light in your frames. Let's move this to 100%, again, just to show you what happens, creates a really nice starburst effect. Let's move it down to around 30. I kind of like that, and then maybe increase the number of beams to around 10. I like that as well, and then maybe the brightness to around 66, and add a bit more glow, what about 60, and the beam width maybe a little bit more. That looks really cool. So this is before, and this is after. I'm just gonna zoom in before and after. Let's go to the develop module and uh, I think I'm gonna decrease the exposure a little bit just to create a more dramatic look by hmm, minus 40 will do and uh, what if we decrease the highlights? No, I don't want to touch that and then maybe add a bit of shadow detail just a little bit. 15 will do and uh, maybe also increase the saturation a tad by 
15 points again. I think that looks quite nice. I don't want to push it too far. Um, temperature, I want to make it a little bit cooler. So, minus 10. Run that. I think that should suffice. I'm not going to touch the white balance. That's the develop module. Let's have a look at this structure AI just to show you what happens. Let's push it all the way to 100%. This is very similar, in my opinion, to the dehaze slider in uh, Lightroom, just to create more contrast and then uh, brings out more detail in your shots. Obviously, we're not gonna push it that far. Maybe a subtle plus 6% is gonna make it look more dramatic. Just a little bit, very slight change. I kind of like that. Let's have a look at the small details and increase the small details by five to 10 points between that. Let's go with seven. So before and then after just adds a bit more detail to, for example, these uh, waves, brings out a little bit more textural detail and would we'll do the same with the lighthouse as well on the left. And let's have a look at this landscape. Dehaze, wow, that looks super dramatic. I don't wanna add that much, maybe 15 to 20%, 20 points. That looks good to me. Let's do a bit more vignette control and push it down to around, I'd say 25 is gonna be subtle enough and you can still see the effect just to lead the eye of the viewer towards the uh, focal point. With the Relight AI tool, you can adjust the light in the foreground and in the background. And I'm not gonna touch that. Maybe pull it down in the background a little bit to minus 15. And we can leave the depth control in the middle. I'm not gonna touch that. That looks nice. With the Atmosphere AI, you can add different modes such as fog layer, fog mist and haze. I don't wanna add that. For this particular image, let's choose a lot. I kind of like the long beach for this particular image. Let's move it all the way to 100% so you can see how dramatic and extremely moody the frame has become. I'm gonna push it that far. I'd say around 45 looks good to me. Maybe it's a little bit too much. I'm gonna push it back to 20. So before and then after, I like that. I think that's it. I kind of like this image as it is. So let's go and have a look what this image was like in its raw format. So this was before, this is the end result. Alrighty, let's go to our next image. We won't have to do much editing here. This was taken on a beautiful, absolutely beautiful um, morning. The sky was on fire. What I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna turn this frame into something more abstract. So let's just crop in a little bit, a vertical crop and pull it down a little bit more. How about that? Yeah, I think we can work with this. Um, let's go again to the enhance and increase to around 60 and the sky enhancer push it all the way to 55. Let's zoom in and uh, look for some artifacting. I think it looks nice. I don't think we've done any substantial damage, so to speak. Let's apply noiseless AI, go with the uh, low settings. We gotta wait a little bit until the program finishes and that looks really nice and creamy so before and after i think i should just zoom in a little bit more for you guys so you can actually see especially in these areas where it transitions so this is before and this is after let's go to the develop module and uh, maybe decrease the exposure a little bit by hmm, minus 33 i'm gonna pull down the highlights as well to around minus 30 for more vibrance. I'm also gonna push the temperature towards the cooler end of the spectrum. I like this uh, color contrast a little bit more rather than the um, warmer tones, so minus 
35, 34, that will do. So this was before and this is after. I'm kind of happy with this. I think this is a very simple edit, but it works in my opinion. Let's go to our third image now. This one was taken at the Red Bluff uh, lookout, not so far from where I live. It's a beautiful area. This was a 30 second exposure shot at f13. I used the graduated filter and also an ND filter. I believe it was a 10 stop ND filter for this image, which was taken about half an hour before uh, sunset or maybe an hour before sunset as I was testing uh, my Nisi filters for the very first time. Let's just fix a couple of issues here. Go to the tools. Let's align the horizon again. Now that we have aligned the horizon, I'm gonna go for a more uh, landscape look and just, I think I want this S curve to end right at the end of the corner. So this is the crop that I'm gonna go for. I think it's gonna look nice. Maybe pull it back a little bit. That looks nice. I think that is much better than the original crop. Let's do the enhance once again push it all the way to 100. You can see that the difference is just amazing. We're gonna go for around 60 and then do the sky enhancement again. Maybe just around 25% will be enough. In this instance, I think I used a circular polarizer for this frame because even the raw image is saturated enough. I can already see a couple of uh, dust spots or sensor spots. Let's go to the erase tool then here you have a remove dust spots tool which will automatically or should automatically remove the most prominent uh, sensor dust and you can see that it has done a great job so that's done easy as let's go to the develop module and then definitely bring down the highlights uh, by 100% but I want to just manually apply that so I'm gonna just brush it into this area, especially here. Let's use a larger brush and then just do it here. So you can be much more precise as to how you wanna control the light and the highlights there. I like that, that's really good. So this is before and this is after, before and after. Maybe I'm gonna pull it down a little bit more. I'm not gonna touch the saturation or the vibrance or the colors or the temperature in this instance either. It looks pretty good to me already. Okay, let's go and add a lot maybe. Go to mood and choose a lot. I think I'm gonna go with the Los Angeles. So before and then after, before, after. It looks quite cinematic with this uh, lot. There's one more thing that I wanna do for this particular image. Let's go to the color harmony and add um, five. I think that's gonna help already. So this is before and after, before and after. Just a little bit more vibrance, just a tad more saturation. And I think this is finished as well. So this is before and this is after. I think the end result is really decent. Let's go to our next image. I wanted to show you how you can copy all the edits that you have done to one particular image and then just paste it onto another. So make sure that you select the image, then go to edit and then hit copy or command plus copy as a shortcut on a Mac and then go to the image where you wanna paste it to and then just paste and that should transform your image already. Let's go and have a look what has happened to this shot before, after. I think that looks really nice as well. There's only one thing that we gotta fix here. I can already see the sensor dust uh, hasn't been removed. So let's go to the erase tool and then just remove dust spots. That should definitely remove the dust spot right up there. Perfect. You can see that uh, there are a couple of uh, hot pixels there, which we could easily just uh, remove and delete manually. Let's do that. One, two, three, and then just erase. Perfect. All right, let's go to our second last image, which is of the HMVS Cerberus. 
which is a breastwork uh, monitor that served in the Victorian Naval Forces back in the day between 1871 and 1924. This is one of my favorite locations. I have been to this spot a number of times and I really love taking uh, images of this awesome subject. Let's go to the edits again and uh, go to the enhance AI, my favorite tool, and then push it all the way to 100 and then do the same with the sky. But let's just pull it down to around 60 and then maybe the accent as well to around 75. And let's remove those ugly um, dust spots as well. Go to the erase tool and then remove dust spots. Wonderful. So that looks nice. Maybe we should remove the noise as well now. Let's use low just to get rid of the noise that we introduced, especially to the sky. Let's go to the develop section and uh, increase the shadow detail. So we can see a little bit more detail on the side of the ship. Plus 40 should be good. And then with the color, I think I'm gonna um, increase a little bit more saturation. Plus 30 and then do the same with the vibrance. 10 for the vibrance. I think that looks pretty natural still. Let's go to the curves adjustment tool just to introduce a little bit more contrast. I'm gonna pull it down in the uh, shadows, darker tones. Let's go to the structure AI and plus seven is gonna be really good just to see more detail on this rusty ship. Let's go and choose a lot now. And I think I've already made a decision. I'm gonna go with San Diego. This is before and this is after. Maybe introduce a little bit more saturation around 15. That looks nice to me. Maybe the color harmony. Just add a bit more brilliance. Is gonna work for this frame as well. I'm not gonna touch the color temperature or the color contrast. I think we're finished with this very basic edit once again. And uh, this is the image before, really boring, bland image. And in a matter of minutes, we managed to transform it into something a little bit more vibrant. Let's go to the edit once again, and then copy the adjustments. And then I'm gonna just paste the settings to this image as well. That looks pretty good. I think it is a bit too saturated for this particular image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the tools and um, go to the color and then just bring down the saturation a little bit maybe to around minus 15 so this is before and this is after I think it looks a bit more natural the only thing that we need to do here I think I'm gonna go with a slightly different uh, crop uh, let's do the horizon alignment but I'm gonna fix it a little bit. I'm gonna go with a different crop here and pull this up as well. Pull it all the way to the side so it's not as cramped and then just hit apply and then we're just gonna remove these ugly sensor dust and then we are done. So let's go to the edits again. This guy the edits so this was before and this is the final edit. I'm really happy with this. I absolutely love this program. It makes the whole editing process so much more fun than when you have to, you know, manually do a lot of things and uh, more complex uh, tasks. I mean, even in Photoshop, you can save actions and that definitely speeds up the process. But this one is a whole another level in my opinion. And it is super easy to figure out on your own. Very intuitive. I really like the user interface of this program. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. As I said before, if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you straight away. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel. Thanks again and catch you all very soon in the next one.